us, we sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit.
cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of the Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Amos answered him as I did. I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and dressed of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Mark chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. Mark 6, 7 through 13. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second two. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The gospel, the good news about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord.
understand discipleship as Jesus understood it. And discipleship in Jesus' day was really a commitment, a 24-7 commitment of a follower of Christ. One whose faith is witness and gives testimony to the resolve to be bowed to the wall in everything you do, in everything you think, in everything, every way possible that you show for your life to others. Discipleship was a serious commitment. It was part-time work, I mentioned. It was full-time. It was a, a challenge for a disciple to manifest what their teacher has shown them and, and gives them and the challenge to live up to that at every moment. We are called to be those kinds of disciples in our world today. Are we? Are we? Now understand it as Jesus understood. And understand that Jesus calls his disciples together. And, you know, he calls them together at a moment when he has already been rejected by his own neighbors and friends. Remember last Sunday's gospel? Those who were that church last Sunday. <laughs> this, his neighborhood rejected him. And so he calls his disciples together. And my thinking was, he was calling them together, and you know how, you know, when people abandon you, you, you want to get friends around, right? But he calls them together, and he says to them, look, I'm going to send you out. Y'all been with me enough to know who I'm about, what I'm about. You've been with me enough to know that you can witness what I have called you to in my name. Uh -huh. With confidence, he calls them together and says, go. Go into the world and proclaim the gospel. Yeah. Preach repentance. Are we those kinds of disciples today? Do we preach the gospel and sometimes use words? Do we preach the gospel in such a way that the good news of Christ is shown to everybody? And that good news that he calls us to is to understand that God is about repentance of sin. All right, all right. Is that our number one agenda? Well, that'll be. I know some folks not in this church. Uh -huh. <laughs> That have been holding on to other people's sins for a long time. Well. But he, Jesus is very clear. I'm sending you out to be and speak about repentance of sin. He didn't mince words. He just said, that's what you're about. Go do it. And then he tells the disciples this. You know, all you need is a walking stick and one of your brothers or sisters. That's all you need. And the reason why he said, bring one of your brothers or sisters, is because in the Bible days, if you really want to give testimony, it was good that you had somebody else to verify that you are saying the right. Are we those kinds of disciples today? That go into the world with a brother or sister and give testimony to what God is saying to us in the gospel today? Our discipleship in Christ is dependent upon that. How we make it real and give that and show that to others. 
and think that that wasn't enough, Jesus says to them, in whatever household you go to, be satisfied with what they give you. Don't look to go somewhere else. You know how some people go from house to house until they find the house they really want to be with? I'm not talking about people in this church, but I know people like that. on what is given to you and do what you're called to do. And then he says this, which is a real critical point. Jesus says, if they don't welcome you, shake the dust from your feet. Don't argue. It ain't about all. You make your point and you move on. Wouldn't more Christians would be like that? Oh. Maybe we would be able to sit at the table of fellowship more often. Oh, well. Come on. But he makes it plain for his disciples. It is not for you to judge. It's not for you to argue and fuss and fight. No, uh -uh. that's in God's hands. Leave it in God's hands. Leave it there. Just do what you have been called to do. Our discipleship must reflect that. Mm -hmm. And when it does that, we are able to really speak in the name of our God. You got to first of all be Understand that fully that you have made your vow to God. It is God you serve, not anybody else. Understand the lesson we learned from that in that first reading. You see, when Amaziah came to Amos and said, Get a, get away from the visionary, we don't need you here. You know. We have our sanctuary and temple in Bethel, and we don't need you to come up here from uh, Jerusalem to tell us that we are in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that the king was wrong to, to build another sanctuary in Bethel, and he's building another one in Dan. Amos was told by God, go and tell them that is not my plan. That's the story. Uh -huh. And Amos goes and he just makes the point. Amaziah says, it gets bad with him, he says, get away from here. And Amos says to them, look, understand something. I don't claim to be a prophet. I was a happy shepherd uh -huh. following the flock. Yeah. Dressing sycamore trees. <laughs> it was God who called me. And said, Go. It was God who said to me, Bring this word to them. Announce the good news that I have called them to. And make it clear. And what did Amos do? He made it clear. They rejected it. And Amos said, Goodbye and good riddance. And moved on. Some of us need to be that way with some of our in-laws and outlaws. Well, well, well. Well. Make the point. Goodbye and good riddance. <laughs> I did what God called me. Well. You gotta make your commit understand that you make your vow to God. Your commitment is to do God's will. And be clear about it. And let God's agenda be the most profound thing that your life shows to others. That's what it's all about. And then the scriptures are so, they're so powerful today. Yes. You know, in that, in that second reading, Paul addresses the church at Ephesus. Now, the church at Ephesus was a very unique church. 
And what made them so unique was it was a community of people, of Gentiles, people of many races and ways of life, who really made their vow to, to, to witness their faith fully. And they were so profound in their witness and testimony, Paul was just, just he had to applaud them for how good they were. And he, he applauds them as a community. Not as individuals, but as a community because their faith was so strong in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was so clear that they wanted so much to make God's will real in their lives. They were so devoted to God. Paul says, you know, it's not about y'all being a ch in a church building together. It's the way in which you are church to others. Where everybody is welcome. Where everybody shares the blessing of what you have come to receive, which you, you are good blessed with. How they can see how God's mercy shines forth in the ways in which you pray for one another, support one another, enrich each other with the life of Christ that you have come to know and appreciate. Paul calls the community to see that your communion in Christ is so powerfully strong. There is nothing that will tear down. His call to the church at Ephesus is the call of what we need today in our world. Would that our churches were not just about the buildings that we, we worship together, but really it's the communion that makes us all one. In Ephesus, they were so strongly one in, in un their unity that it, there was nothing that was going to distract them from what it means for them to reflect God's love, uh -huh. God's mercy, uh -huh. the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They didn't have to worry because they knew and understood that that witness would overcome issues of racism, sexism, all the things that could possibly divide them and, and make them go into camps against one another. But they were able to come together in such a way that they knew that their focus being on God would be their strength. Can we say that of ourselves today? Do we look for that in ourselves and in each other? Sisters and brothers, this is the charge we are called to keep. I call us to make our vow to God. Be so focused on God's and God's agenda that our agendas will take a second and third seat. We will be so focused on God's agenda that our prayer will be fulfilled in God. And we will find ourselves enriched and enlightened in God. I don't know about you, but I've done made my vow to you. And I'll never return back. I'm going to pray. I'm going to look. I'm going to act the best way I can as God calls me to go forth into the world and spread the good news. To announce and preach about repentance of sin in our world. 
and to call my sisters and brothers to the blessing that we're called to be for one another. I will go. I shall go to see what the end For the church. May the Lord guide and strengthen our leaders as they share the good news through their words and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations devastated by war or food shortages, may the Lord of heaven and earth bring healing, restoration, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the prayer of Our Lady of Promsa, we will be spared damage to life and property during the hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth in this faith community, may they grow ever deeper in their faith and desire for the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, May they have the protection of St. Michael as they serve, protect, and heal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayer needs listed in our Book of Intercessions, and for the sick and shut-ins of our church community. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you shower your grace upon us each and every day, whether we are conscious of it or not. Help us each day to live our lives generously, willingly, passing on your grace to the people in our life as we humble ourselves in expressing our needs through Christ Jesus, who is born forever and ever. Amen.
the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst, with mighty hands and outstretched arm. You led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrimage, her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave me thanks. He gave it to the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Grant that by the power of the 
the spirit of your love. We may be counted now and until the day of return among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, in there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Saint, the Cleaver, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ your Son.
Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mission, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements for today. Together, New Orleans will be hosting a citywide assembly of congregations on Tuesday, July 13th. We are in need of 10 delegates or more from St. Peter Flavor to represent our church community. There are cards in the rear of the church, or you may call the parish office if you are interested in participating. First District NOPD will be hosting a peace walk on this Monday, July 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. It will begin on the corner of Orleans Avenue and North Rochelle. We ask that all who are able to please come out and join in the peace walk. The Feast of St. Anne will be celebrated on Monday, July 26th through Wednesday, July 28th at St. Anne's Shrine on Ursulines Avenue. All are invited to come out. For all other announcements and information, we ask that you please consult the church's bulletin, which is given out in church, but is available online, or you may go to the church's website and or Facebook page. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to also thank all those who joined us in celebration today, especially uh, our, our guests, the seminarians from Notre Dame Seminary. Stand up, Yahweh, so we can thank you. shun anybody. We just have to get back to this. We both have stuff to do after Mass today. So uh, uh, we want to meet with them and we have some other things that we need. Details of hospitality that we have to take care of. So we beg your uh, pardon that we cannot be there with you. I want to thank everyone who made this celebration. I want to thank uh, Father Joe for bringing the seminary. that serve us with the choir to this hospitality ministry, uh, our servers, our lectors, our ministers of communion, all, all people that help in every way, shape, or form. It's when the community does what we, we do that it really makes us one day together. And I thank God for all of you. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is finished. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another.